Hey, good day. Welcome back to Mike's Diabetes World. Okay, blood sugar is a respectful 6.9. Pretty straight all day, which is a positive for me. Time and range? 99%. This all is in within reason. I have to keep this up. You know, uh, this average blood sugar is a little higher. Would like that to come down, but I don't want this to increase. This can increase, and that would obviously be that just, just are going smaller. That's where we are so far today. Today, I want to discuss your diabetic team. And how you go in making this team. And I'll be right back and we'll get going. This channel is provided for informational purposes only. Contact your physician for any diagnostic or treatment plan. Your diabetic team is centered first around you. Everything that your team should do should center amongst you. You shouldn't be pigeonholed, and when I mean pigeonholed, oh, all the other type ones do this, so you should be doing this too. Not every other person's game plan will work for you. Same as yours may not work for everyone else. So, Let's start with your family doctor. Most of us were probably either diagnosed by a family doctor or an endocrinologist. Or sorry, not an endocrinologist, an emergency room doctor. That's probably your first inroads into the medical team building. Your second one will probably be an endocrinologist. And I really didn't know how important it was to have an endocrinologist. Now, an endocrinologist takes care of everything diabetes related. Pure and simple. If you're having too many lows, too many highs, that is an endocrinologist. If you're suffering from a skin infection, it could be a GP, unless it's affecting your blood sugars, then maybe they could get the 
second involved. If you need referrals to other specialties, that's your GP. It's important that you have a GP, important that you have an endocrinologist. When I was diagnosed, went into the hospital, I met an endocrinologist. And I really did not like the guy. He was an older gentleman. And I'm sure he was probably nice. And then I did not have another endocrinologist until I met Dr. John Hunt and Dr. Tildesley. Both two doctors, different hospitals. But before that, I went and got yelled at by my own doctor and went years without seeing an endocrinologist. And then we moved and I kind of lost track of an endocrinologist. I got to working again and life got too busy. You know, at night I'd be dead tired. I'd fall asleep. And then, you know, if I made an appointment, I'd be lucky to even keep it. So, we moved into the Burnaby New West area. And I went to the hospital and got asked if I had a diabetes doctor. And I said, no, I pretty well had always done it through my family doctor. Well, they hummed and hawed. They came back and said, you really need to have a diabetic doctor. So they made arrangements and I caught Dr. Clarissa Wallace, who happened to be my endo on call. Awesome. It was probably the best diabetic move I ever made. I started seeing her and it was 20 years long. It was, she got me on so many programs, took care of me, helped. guide my diabetes and well I always knew bits and pieces of diabetes care I did not know the true in and out and she sort of guided that now keeping your blood sugars under control is important that's why you need an endocrinologist. There's also someone else in the diabetes field that you should have, and that is a diabetes educator. I've got an endo, I don't need a diabetes educator. Well, you do. And they're gonna make sure that all the tools that your endocrinologist has said will get correctly used. And for pump, they can do pump training. They can say, well, I don't know if this shots are good or if the pump will work for you or the pump may not work for you. Reviewing your blood sugars. Seeing if you are actually missing something or not. Now, this usually goes with the endodiabetes educator, would be a dietitian. 
Now, if you know how to count carbs, you know what types of foods to eat, it's still good to have a relationship with a dietitian. Dietitian, a little side here, a dietitian I had years ago when I was going to a diabetes education center has now become a trainer for my new pump. So, awesome. You could take a look at podiatrist. You could take a look at social worker. Eyes. And you need more than an optometrist. Optometrist will sell you glasses to see for a diabetic ophthalmologist or retina specialist will check the back of the eye. Blood sugars have a tendency to burst if your blood sugars are not controlled. So it's good that you get your eyes checked. Now I know some of you may have seen my check-in just a few days ago. All good. And the ophthalmologist took care of any leaks I had years ago and have been able to keep them off pretty good. Keeping any of your complications. I know I've talked to this so many times, but keeping any of your complications under control will be the best thing. So, if you happen to need psychiatry help, they should, you should find someone you like. If you need a dermatologist, awesome. Uh, infectious disease or and you need to have a pharmacist. A pharmacist that will know what your medications are, why you're doing certain things. Going to one. Now I can remember years ago Oh, I need insulin. I'll stop off here. And it was the same thing, going through the same way. Who's your doctor? Who's your diabetes doctor? And back then, to get your strips, you had to show that you went for diabetic training, which I never did, so another reason not to test. But that's all important. Now, all these extras that you should have. In Canada, we have a pharmacare laws that protect your health, that you can see a doctor when you need to. Sometimes you may have to wait, but you see your doctors, but what happens if you see a doctor and you just do not click with that doctor, go back to the prescribing doctor or the referring doctor and say, you know what? I really don't connect with this person. And they usually have many others that they can refer you to. But the number one referral is that you have to do the work. They may come and give you all sorts of advice, steps you need to do, but again, you have to go out and solve the issues by doing your work, typing in your amounts, doing the testing. If anything is looking wrong, get it looked after. And this last one, 
isn't really a medical team, but you should always have a hospital in your main area. I got into Royal Columbia years ago, and I don't know if it's still a choice now that I'm out here, but Royal Columbia, I got to know all the endos. So now if I go in to emergency, I know an endo and they know my case. If I just go and show up at another hospital, you may get another endo that could make wrong decisions or decisions that you've already gone through. It's not implicable that you have a hospital that you enjoy, but it's a good idea. And with that, I hope this helps you get doctors that you need. And with that, have a great day. We'll talk later. Bye. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you. My email is mikesdiabetesworld at gmail.com. mikesdiabetesworld at gmail.com. <laughs>